Hey guys, this is the Betamax man here. So uh, we're going to talk a little bit about uh, why um, the Sanyo made Beta VCRs are more reliable than the Sony made uh, 711 uh, chassis Beta VCRs that Sony made. Sony has a lot of direct drive motors and Sanyo's have more regular motors. Sanyo's used Sanyo used regular motors with pulleys and belts as opposed to Sony's direct drive motors. Direct drive motors do tend to have a lot more problems than the regular motors. The only thing you have to worry about with the regular motors is they do need to have a drop of oil every now and then to keep the motors from uh, freezing up because if the lubricant dries out then the motor will actually seize up and no more you know you know motor will have to be completely disassembled and re-lubricated if it's not gotten to the point where it's completely dead um, I have brought motors back to life, motors that were completely seized, and if you can take them apart and re-lubricate everything and let it sit, let the lubrication sit, you can get the motors to free up sometimes. Not always, but sometimes you can. Uh, so yes, these regular motors will need drops of oil to keep them moving and lubricated but um uh, also sony 711 chassis used a lot of uh solenoids to engage uh certain modes um vhs machines had mode switches uh sony betas had solenoid switches uh when it comes to the uh 711 chassis also, some of the other chassis, too, but... Also, Sony had these spring-loaded uh, tape guides that would pop up uh, when it was threading the tape around the drum. Where with the Sanyos, you've got stationary tape guides. These tape guides are stationary. They don't move. And they're not going to spring they're not spring loaded so they're not going to break on you they use um more mechanical switches um these little switches that uh when they make contact then they activate and of course they start the loading cycles um Another thing that I tend to have problems with is that there is a plastic a plastic part that has a spring over it for the actual tape guide. There's a, a tape guide that loops around and there's a plastic piece and it breaks in half because the plastic is, becomes brittle and it breaks and when that happens your tape won't you can't get it in or out you won't be able to eject it and uh, because what it'll do is it'll if it breaks it'll start it'll start to uh thread and then if it breaks then it can't finish the threading cycle and it won't unthread either. You'll have a tape that's stuck in there. And you can get the tape out, but not without damaging it. So it's hard to get the tape out when you've got a tape guy that's that's broken. And it's loaded halfway or whatever. And then you have to, to physically pull the tape away from the guides. Pull it back and you know get your tape out but you're gonna have some damage to your tape um th those have problems um now they also had voltage regulators that failed 
Um, these also have regulators that fail, but these don't, they don't fail as much on the Sanyos as they did on the, on the Sony's, even though that regulator chip is both made by Sanyo. Sanyo made those regulators for Sony, and, uh, they also made them for their own machines, but the, uh, I believe the... Yeah, this is a 7216 regulator on this one. Um, we'll, we'll do a, a little uh, a zoom in here. As you can see, but that's a different regulator. It's uh, it looks the same, but it's a different uh, it's a different model. Um, STK5441 is the ones that fail. Um, these they fail, but not as much. Um, and these have a, a regular motor with a pulley and a belt, and then they have idler tires, and yes, these idler tires, when they go bad, they will, uh, they are prone to chewing up tapes because when the tires go bad, it can't suck the tape back into the cassette. And you end up with a uh, taping incident. But as far as like from a mechanical um, aspect, uh, the Sanyos are a lot more reliable uh, when it comes to reliability. Um, because, like I said, I mean, the Sonys, they used a lot of that 7-Eleven chassis. They used a lot of plastic parts. A lot of plastic parts. And over time, they become brittle, and they, the plastic becomes very brittle, and it starts to break. You'll see, yes, the, the Sanyos have plastic parts, too. But the parts that are plastic are not necessarily parts that are going to fail. Um, there is no way that they could make all the parts metal. If they did, they nobody could afford them. Um, one of the reasons why the Sanyos were cheaper is you can see the chassis is plastic. And the lighter the, the weight of the material. So if the material weighs less, they can make it for less and they can sell it for less the cheaper they can make it the cheaper they can you know they can make it more affordable to the average buyer you know um there's a lot of a lot of reasons why i think that the the sanyos were more superior to uh sony's 7-eleven chassis um Sony had a 710 chassis. 710 chassis was the best chassis ever. Um, the 710 chassis kicks Sanyo's ass, but uh, we're talking about the 711 chassis, the one that nobody really likes. Uh, the 711 chassis was that Sony had. They put it in all kinds of models. Uh, the SLH of 1000 that I have. Those two SLH of 1000s, um, the uh, SLH of 2000 on the top, um, they used, you know, that chassis, which had a lot of problems. Those chassis, they just, they did, they had a lot of problems. And we're finding, now we're finding more and more problems with the Sonys than the Sanyos because of those cheap but those parts were made out of plastic. They just become brittle. Plastic becomes brittle over time. And so, you know, but that's why. Now, believe it or not. Now, there are some people that will tell you, okay, well, uh, Sanyo's picture quality is not as good as the Sony. That's actually false. If you've got a Sanyo machine 
and it has less picture quality than the Sony, then that means you've got something wrong with the Sanyo. There's something wrong with it. If you've got a Sanyo that has really bad picture quality, either one, you've got heads that are worn out, which I find more Sanyos with worn out heads than I, than I do the Sony, believe it or not. But the Sanyos, uh, the heads on a Sanyo is a little bit more fragile, I think. But when it comes to reliability, the Sanyo really does kick Sony's ass. But um, if you've got bad picture quality, you either on your Sanyo, you got a Sanyo that's got a really bad picture, it could be a couple different things. One, it could be the heads of wore out. Or two, you've got capacitors in the video circuitry that are going bad or are bad and causing a uh, bad image quality. Um, the preamp or the head amp, if the capacitors fail in those areas, they can cause bad picture. Also, capacitors in the power supply. Sometimes capacitors in the power supply go bad and you'll get um, what's known in the um, business as pairing bone. And so there's a lot of different uh, reasons, but um, yeah, I mean, those are your two main reasons. But, you know, they, they had about the same quality. The quality was basically the same. You know, they both, you know, used the U-loading mechanism. Um, VHS used a M-load mechanism because it looked like an M when it loaded. Um, because with a VHS, you had um, a, a head drum that would spin. So the heads were mounted on the upper drum and that upper drum on a VHS would spin and you would have a tape guide on each side that would wrap the head up against wrap the tape up against the heads well with beta it's different beta it does almost like a 360 all the way around it wraps it all the way around and it looks like a U shape with the VHS, it looks like an M because you've got the tapes going, wrapping like that. So it looks like an M, but with with the beta, it's a U-load mechanism because it looks like a giant U when it loads. So we'll show you, uh, we'll, we'll plug in the Sanyo and we'll show you um, what, because this one works, and we'll show you what what it looks like when a beta is loading so you know i'm shooting this on my phone too so um i'm not going to be editing this video down i'm just going to be using this i'm just going to upload the video straight upload to youtube so this is what it looks like when you have a beta system so hit now with uh Sanyo a lot of the most of the Sanyo models did not load the tape around the head like Sony did. Sony, the minute you put that tape in on a Sony Betamax, it's gonna thread the tape right away. On the Sanyos they act more like an older VHS machine did. The older VHS machines they would not do anything until you hit play. So, same with the Sanyo Betas. They won't do anything until you hit play. But look how the uh, loading mechanism is. You see how it looks like a big U shape? Like a, a merry-go-round, you know, like a Ferris wheel, I guess you could say. Let's uh, take a look at it again. And you can see how it how it loads, and it looks like a giant U. Um, look at the way that the the tape is wrapped 
around it. it it's more like a U shape, and that's why they call it a uh, U load uh, mechanism because that's basically what it's like. Now, another thing that Sanyo does that's actually good is when it goes to do the fast forward or uh, rewind, it does not thread around the drum. It keeps the tape unloaded from the drum. Basically, all that happens is it's got a little tape guide, and the tape guide will apply a little bit of tension on the tape when like see we'll go fast forward and you'll see that tape guide you can see that tape guide that is actually watch that tape guide it just pulls the tape out just a little bit you see even in rewind it'll do the same thing it just gives it a little bit of tension just gives it enough tension so that uh, it can do its job but uh, yeah so you know and yeah this is a blue tape I, I know I, I had someone comment on it uh, yes the blue tapes were cool looking um, don't know why they had them blue I don't know why um, some of them were blue um, but they were. But yeah, it's cool. I thought I would use my my blue cassette. And uh, I thought this was uh, recorded in uh, Hi-Fi Stereo. But I actually accidentally had the Hi-Fi Stereo uh, switch off when I was making this recording. I, I was using this. I actually made a recording on that customer's uh, 600 uh, that you seen me, uh, work on, and, uh, yeah, so I recorded this on his machine, because I wanted to make sure that the recording was functioning properly as well, but this has got, um, this is, uh, the 1990 version of, uh, The Mummy, with, um, uh, what's his name? in there um brandon fraser so and the only thing i don't like about the uh, sanyo is that they don't have an hours minutes and seconds frame counter it's just that you get a minutes and you get a seconds you don't get an hours so you're not getting a, a accurate uh reading of uh tape but uh that that is one thing i don't like about the sanyos is they don't have uh hours minutes and seconds so somebody did remind me on my i was talking about on my slh of 1000 how it had the hours minutes and seconds and then it had another one which at the time i couldn't remember what it was but it was frames hours minutes seconds and frame because that have a frame counter and somebody said yeah it's a frame that's frames i'm like oh yeah okay now now the light bulb goes on in my head and now i remember yeah that's what it is that's you know so anyway but uh yeah and uh there's a shielding plate that actually goes over the top of the um video head here um and that's kind of there to uh shield it from any kind of electrical interference from other electronics so it's actually got this is one of the shielding plates that goes over the video head and then there's another one that goes over the uh cassette housing and i have that plate off and i don't know what ever happened to it uh, I lost the plate for the cassette housing, so it doesn't hurt in any. I mean, it still works just fine without the uh, plate on the cassette housing, but you have to have that shielding plate on to cover the video head because uh, otherwise you'll have interference. Um, sometimes you'll have like a, a gray, a little gray 
stripe bar gray bar that'll go across this picture and you might have two or three of them that go across the picture if you don't have the shielding plate on on the Sanyos and Sony's didn't have shielding plates um, that covered them but um, Sanyos did now another uh, machine that can be more reliable than the Sony's were not just the Sanyos but the Toshiba's a lot of the Toshiba model VCRs did the same thing that Sanyo did they used a belt and pulley system so they used regular motors with pulleys and belts and that really does make uh the reliability the reliability on these Sanyos and the Toshibas are ridiculously high when it comes to mechanical. The Toshibas, some Toshiba models had problems with um, the um, electronics. Um, a lot of times if you come across... Uh, a Toshiba 44, um, what was it, a 442, and the 4440, uh, I can't remember the model number, but those ones, they were the uh, four-head, they had a, a two-head hi-fi and a four-head hi-fi, and um, those particular models had problems with, with the electronics. Um, a lot of times, the it won't have, uh, it may have video signal going to the TV with the RF, but not the RCA, because, um, the video board has, has issues, so, um, anyway, but, uh, yeah, when it comes to reliability, as long as the Sanyo has brand new belts and brand new tires, the Sanyos are more reliable than the Sony, and uh, there were some models that didn't quite have a very good picture, and that was the uh, 4400. Those didn't have very good picture quality, but those were very, very cheaply made, and they just, they weren't that great. But most of the Sanyos had just as good a picture as the Sony's. If you've got a Sanyo that's got a really bad picture, there's something wrong with it. Because the Sanyos, they're, they're not much different. They're really not. Other than the that 4400, uh, they don't typically have that great a picture quality on those particular models. But uh, most, most Sanyos just as good a picture as, as the Sony, you know, uh, they, they both use the same loading mechanism, you know, and when it comes to loading, uh, the tape, you know, they both have a stationary, you know, head drum, the head drum is stationary, the video head spins inside the drum, you know, and it protrudes through a little slot, that's pretty much it though guys um this is uh pretty much the this is just a video that i'm um, kind of giving you guys uh to kind of uh pacify you until we do uh part three of the of the uh the sl 5000 is going to be back up on the workbench um i've talked to the owner of it and they're okay with spending, you know, uh, over $200, which is what it's going to cost them to get it fixed. And they're okay with paying that. So, um, I do have the go ahead to go ahead and finish repairing that one. That one has a lot of problems and I fixed problems on it and I just keep encountering more problems and I did order a parts deck, which the parts deck has not come yet. Um, ended up getting my uh, money back and uh, buying another parts deck because the guy did not fall through. He fell through. Uh, he kept sending me excuses. 
you know, messaging me, uh, all kinds of excuses as to why he hadn't shipped it yet. First, he said it was family problems, and I felt bad. I'm like, okay, if you got family problems, you know, I'm not a, I'm not an asshole, you know. I mean, I do care about people, so if you got family problems and you can't ship it right now, okay, I understand. You know, like, okay, if you're, you know, your mom's dying or whatever, you know, somebody's dying or somebody has cancer or somebody, whatever family issue it is, okay, it's okay. I'm, I'm, I'm not gonna say anything. I'm gonna be patient. But when you keep coming up with excuse after excuse after excuse, and then then somebody sends you a bogus uh, tracking number, and then you tell eBay, I reported it to eBay, and uh, eBay says, okay, no problem, we're going to get your money back. And they did. eBay got my refund. So now that I got my refund, I went ahead uh, a couple nights ago. In fact, I got to tell the customer this, but I went a couple nights ago and I went and ordered another um, machine because the first one that I ordered didn't work out. The guy was basically, he ripped me off and I should have read the guy's feedback because if I would have read his, his feedback, the guy has had two negative feedbacks within the last couple of months. So that, I should have read the feedback because that would have told me right then and there, don't order from this person because he's a scam. And there were a couple of people that, same thing, same problem that I had, ordered something and it never, never gets shipped. And there's always a thousand excuses as to why they can't ship it. And then they give you some bogus uh, tracking number that's not even... Uh, doesn't even register like uh it's supposed to be a united states postal service tracking number but when you go to put it in it says invalid and i've checked the number several times so i know it's not me making a mistake on typing it in it's this is the number they gave me and and then when ebay done their research boom immediately I got a refund. Within less than 24 hours, I got a refund. So, I've ordered another machine. Hopefully, this seller will come through for me. And uh, I won't have any more problems. But it's very rare that I have problems with eBay. Sometimes you do. You know, it just unfortunately, that's the name of the game. You know, sometimes you get good sellers. And sometimes you get bad sellers. And the bad sellers... What do they do? Well, they get enough negatives against them. They just cancel their account and they reopen in some other name and they start it all over again. So I don't, but eBay is actually doing a lot more now to keep the dishonest people off of eBay. Um, because if somebody um, sends you a, a fraudulent tracking number or gives you multiple excuses, well, eBay can go and investigate and find out, well, yeah, hey, it's a bogus um, tracking number. Now, eBay will even give you the benefit of the doubt. You know, check the, e check the numbers, make sure it's legit. But I don't want to bore you guys with a long story, but basically, yes, I needed parts for that customer's deck. And I didn't have all the parts needed because the parts that were happening... There were some things that went wrong with it that my that I just couldn't do anything with it. I had to have a different part to put in it to get it to work. But uh, anyway, so that's pretty much this video. This is just kind of a filler video, just kind of, you know, pacify you guys uh, until we get to the... Uh, we will do part three of the uh, 5000. So once we do that then uh, we'll, it might be part three. It might even have a part four. I don't know yet. Um, there are multiple problems that that machine has. And so when something has that many problems, I, I try to discourage the owner from repairing it because it, not only does it cost me headache and bunch of time, but it... it 
takes their bill, their bill goes from here all the way up to here, you know. So, anyway. But hopefully you guys enjoyed taking a look at this machine. And, uh, you know, this is kind of like me explaining to you and showing you why um, Sanyos were kind of more reliable uh, from a technical aspect. Um, and, and, you know, when it comes to comparing it to the 711, uh, chassis, 711B, 711D, um, those chassis, they had a lot of problems. So, uh, you know, and then they had the, uh, they had the B, um, the B2 and the B3, and, uh, those, those, I think the, uh, B2 had more problems than the B3. I think B3, they eliminated the, um, they basically went to a rotary encoder switch instead of the, um, switchable, um, that clutch gear, clutch, uh, solenoid mechanism. They got rid of the solenoid, they, they got rid of the clutch mechanism, and they went to a, uh, worm gear, and a cam gear and a uh, mode switch, which it's a sealed switch, so you can't clean it. So good luck trying to clean it because you you can't. It's sealed. But uh, the sealed mode switches usually are okay. They're better than the ones that can be cleaned because they can't. Nothing can get in there. But still. They can get dirty just like any mode switch, but uh, anyway. But uh, I've babbled on long enough, so hey, um, hopefully you guys enjoy the video. And uh, hopefully you guys learn something. And uh, you learn about the Sanyos, and the Sanyos are not that bad. Um, here's one thing. Um, you know, about the, the Sanyos, the, the 4020 and the 4027, both of those Sanyos will play the original Beta 1 speed. So there, there's only a, a couple of Sanyos that would play back Beta 1. Uh, the 4020 and the 4027, I believe the 410 will as well. I think the 410, because the 410 is the same as the 420, it's just an older model. Um, so the 410 and the 420 are like a year or two apart. Um, anyway, but hey, hopefully you enjoyed the video, and uh, we'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.